Well, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good wherever you are, JP here at Websites for Beginners. And this, my friends, is a first look at the new included WooCommerce Builder within Bricks. It's a first look video. So what this means is I didn't prepare anything fancy. We're not going to try and build the next Amazon, of course not, but we're just going to have a look at what's in there so you can have an idea of what this WooCommerce Builder within Bricks is all about. I want to stress, however, it's not only WooCommerce. There's a lot of new features. There's a lot of extra stuff in there. You can go check out the change log within Bricks. This is 1.3. This is WooCommerce phase one. So phase one only includes the single product page as well as product listing pages, which is your product archive page or your shop page. You know, there's all these different kinds of terminology out there. And then it also includes in 1.3, a better builder preview, template shortcodes, custom attributes, accessibility. Look at this list. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't want to do a video today. Unfortunately, I am one of those very lucky people. I get migraines. So it builds up and over a time I need to take a break. And today was that day. <laughs> but guess what? Bricks, you guys, you screwed me over. You wanted to release the WooCommerce. So let's take a look. Not talk too much. Here in WordPress, I already have WooCommerce installed. I already have products. And I just want to give you a tip. If you ever want to practice and you want to set it up, you do that by importing a starter site that has WooCommerce that is for free. I can use Bloxy. I can use Suki. I can use Neve. Now, this specific starter site I hijacked from Neve. So what I do is I install the Neve theme. Then I install the starter site. And after that, I just install Bricks. Remember, Bricks is a theme builder, so you don't install it under plugins. You actually go and you install it here, appearance and themes. You see Neve is deactivated now, Bricks is activated, but I've brought in all that WooCommerce products. I don't need to go and build it out all by myself. Right, so single product page and then product shop, which is the product archives. Let's go and do that. And we do that with a template. We have to create that template within the Bricks Builder for Templates. Navigation sidebar on the left, Bricks up here, and select Templates. Then click on Add New, and the first one we will create is a single product. Did I say single posts earlier? Can't remember. Over here in the top right, you have to select the template type, and now you will see that the single product appears here. This is what we want to do. And each time you select a specific template, you're going to get specific elements within the Briggs Builder for that purpose. Click on single product. That's all we're going to do there. Let's just give it a name up here and I'll call it single product water closet and then say publish and then click on edit with Bricks. Super fast. You know, I just compare this when I do these videos and some of our other page builders take what, 10 seconds the moment you click publish and go into the builder to actually get into the builder. I just decided for kicks to use the light theme. And if you didn't know that there is such a thing as a light theme, you can actually switch bricks from dark mode to light mode within the bricks settings. So I decided just for fun to do the light version. I'm a dark kind of person, but for this one, we're just going to do this. Now, normally in a single product page, you have two columns. You have your image with some jazz below that, and then you have your products on the right. Of course, the sky's the limit. So what I'm going to do is bring in first a container. I'll drop that there. And then with the container selected, I will go to elements and I'll bring in another container. Click here on layout. And what I will do is select it horizontal and then type in two. Oh, okay. And then insert container. Great. So what we actually have now here, if you look here in the structure, we have our container. Let's rename that section. And then this one we can rename row just to give you a idea. And this is column left. And this is column right. OK, and the color scheme is totally different in the light mode. Click on the left column and we click on elements. And over here you will see all the new elements and widgets that you're going to be using for your single product. Usually on this side, you put an image and the first one you will see is product gallery. 
I'll just click and drag it in there. Now, this is not going to be your featured image. This is a product gallery. If you had more than one image, this is where it will appear. Click on it and you see your product gallery in the editor on the left, the columns, how many columns, the gap, and this will determine, you know, all those images that can appear. I only have one, so nothing else appears here. This is not what you want to use for your main image. That is your featured image. Let's delete it, right click, and then click on delete product gallery. And what I've done here is I went and I looked for the image and I drag the image element in, then click on image selected. Over here, select dynamic data, featured image. And that's going to bring in our product image for us. And we can make a few little changes here. Just click on the column. Let's bring in a little bit of padding. Where is it now? Just a little bit. So we have separation. Then click on the right one. Let's see, we start here with the product title. Click drag. There we go. That's Lady Blue Perfume. Then we have a product short description. I like they put there the short, so click and drag. I feel so out of place with this light theme because the theme scheme with this pink little blocks throw me off totally. Hmm. But, but still interesting. Product price, let's drag that in. There's our product price, product meta. And you see, as I drag these in, they all work perfectly. We can switch them out later. Product rating, we can also put that in there. Right. No ratings yet. If there's no ratings, that's how it's going to be. You can leave it in there as a placeholder. It won't display that. It, at least it is there. I'll remove it for now. Then let's bring in another container below all of this. Go to plus and add a container, basic container. Good. And in this container, click on it. We'll bring in our product tabs, which are our normal description and reviews that will appear here. And in front of that, I'm going to bring in related products. There are our related products. We need to add to cart. Okay, and we'll just drop that add to cart here, drag it down below product price. Let's put this in the right order. Nah, I think that's fine. What else do we have here? Add to cart, product rating, nothing. Product content, now that is your full description. Let's bring in product content here. In our second container just above related products there we go and let's click on it and add a little bit of space there let's style quickly out this container here because all of this is way too squashed and i'm just grabbing a few things oh it's you know click and drag these are just amazing little attributes that especially the videos i make and some of these guys still just don't do it. Hide regular price. Oh, okay, cool. Sale price topography. So you can have a different sale price topography. Nice style. Let's go to topography. Let's make the font size bigger. There we go. We can also change the color. Let's put it on something a little bit more visible. Orange. Good. Wow. Orange. No surprise. Seem to just love orange. That's me. Good. Let's see what else have we got here. Let's go back to the elements. And we had the product price, product stock. I don't think this is activated for this one, so it's not going to appear. Um, where did I, product stock, where is it? Did I not drop it? Let's try again. Product stock. Mm, there is product stock. It is selected, but I don't see it. Hmm. Okay. Previously, it did say there I have product stock, but I don't see it display here. And if I select product stock, where is it on my page? Okay. And that's great. That's how we find these things. I tested it earlier and I think I did have product stock. So that's a little bit strange. We have the product meta, product price, product. I think we've got everything here, right? Product additional information. Uh, what is this? Let's drop that there. Also, nothing under product additional information. So let me just delete that. And then product upsells. And I believe this will tell us there are no upsells. 
Okay, so this is strange because previously when I did that, well, you know what, let's save it, refresh the page, reload canvas. This is often something, ah, there we go. Yep, remember when you do something and bricks, feels like it's not putting that brick in the wall for you, just refresh it and then you will have this. So these guys, there is no information for them with my with my project. I didn't put it on my product page. But if you put it in in the future, it will appear there. I just think it looks ugly for this moment. So let's delete it. Great. And now let's just simply go and test it. So save. And remember, we are not creating the next Picasso. And preview it on the front end. There is our page. Let's see if we click on any of these other products. Yep, takes us to those products. Super duper. Of course, you don't have a checkout and cart page at this moment. That is going to appear, according to Bricks here, the remaining Woo-related pages, cart, checkout, account, thank you, etc., will be added in multiple future releases prior to Bricks 1.4. Thanks for that. And I see I have a little clickable hand here. If I click on it, nothing happens. So we have these two at the moment. So we know single page, super easy to build out. And there we have it. Let's just go back to the builder, uh, back to builder. I'm so used to the dark version. Shouldn't have done this, completely screwed myself. Right, so that gives us a first look into the single product page. Let's save it and we exit back to WordPress. I'm going to switch back to the dark theme because it's confusing me and probably confusing you as well. Bricks settings over here and then builder, builder mode back to dark. Thank you very much. And we go to templates now for the product archive page. Templates, we go through the same procedure, add new, and then under template type, you select your product archive, your shop page. And then we'll call this, let's call it shop page just to be different for water closet. Publish, and then edit with bricks. Right, so we bring in our first container and over here, our WooCommerce, WooCommerce widgets. We have breadcrumbs, mini cart, and we want to start with this one products. That's going to be all our products. Let's click on it to see what we've got in terms of queries. I think, good job here. Products per page, let's reduce it to uh, four. So we have that. three, four, layout. So I, I would say columns should go before query. This is just, I'm thinking how I would work. The first thing I would probably want to do is decide how many columns I have. Like in this case, let's say I type there in three. And then after that, I will mess around with the query. Like let's put it down to three or let's put it back to six, right? Is it just me? Um, that's how I'm thinking about it. I would probably have moved the layout or have even included the columns with the query function. I don't think it's a sin. Order by, you have your date, all of these other that you can and order by. Product type, this is simple products, your group and et cetera. You can include and exclude. So if let's say this J.A. Malone, I do not want to have J.A. Malone appear here. Look, it's already there. Nice, it draws in the information from your single products and I can exclude it, and I have the opportunity, let's say CC, CC Vetiver. Also, this is all that will display now. I'll remove it, so we still have something to play with. You have product categories. I just have one here, which is perfume, so not much I can show you there. And then if you have tags, that's also going to be in the game. If you only want to have sale appear, click this one on. I didn't see anything happen. Let's quickly just go have a look, save, preview. View on front end. Yeah, these guys are not on sale. I think that one is not working. The featured one, this did work because there were no products found matching your selection. And hide out of stock, I think, had no effect. But the on sale one, mm, I know this one is on sale. These two aren't, so they should not be displaying, but they do. Right? I'm not getting it wrong. You can also test and see. That's the query. Then you have your fields over here. Very nice. You have all the control over the fields here. You can bring them in. You can reorder them very easily. And if you want to add in new ones, oh, where did I put that price now? Put it over here. Product price, add to cart. 
you can add new fields over here. Let's delete that one. Layout. So we talked about the layout. You have the columns and then you also have the gap. And you can also bring in your widget, which is your show after grid, your pagination or your result count or order by. If I click that, you have an order by feature here. You can also bring in your pagination here on the right. Very nice feature, but you also have separate control as widgets for these two functions. So if we go back to elements, you will see we have our breadcrumbs. If I want to bring in some breadcrumbs there at the top, then I have a mini cart, right? So that will be in case you want to go to your cart page, you will display your mini cart. I dropped it there now. Let me just move it and let's put it in the container also at the top just for you to see it. Let me just see if I can bring in this time my padding works. It didn't work on the previous page. And what else do we have here? Products pagination. So this pagination here is included within this products widget and you can activate it. You can put it in front or after. And at the same time, we also have separate. So if I want to have another product products pagination somewhere else, there you go. Products total, what is the R? And if I hover over it, I want to see the full name. I can't see the full name. Products total results. Okay, there we go. So that's there. You have products filter, everything you expect from a products filter, but no filter set up. Let's click on it. Filters, add item. And then if you have taxonomies, which I don't have in my case, I just put it on perfume. You have many, you're going to be using that over here. Of course, this is horrendous. No, it's not even that bad if you just want to make a very simple site with a simple shop page. Let's go again to the front, save it, control command S, shop page, refresh and see what we've got here. Let's see if the pagination works. Click on page two. Ah, nice. I didn't see any refresh there showing seven to nine of 10 results. Hunky dory, that is it, more or less, what we are seeing at this moment. I don't think at this moment you're going to run a WooCommerce store with it. This is probably just to give people at least the confidence that the product is there and that WooCommerce is rolling out. Single product page and then your product archive page you can create at this moment. But your full tutti, the full show and the whole feeling will only get and come together when we have the card checkout account, thank you, and all of those other pages. So we'll take a look at these roll out and then in the future when everything is nicely packed and ready and at almost bug free because I don't believe anything can ever be bug free. But when it comes to the possibility that you can use it on a live website, run your WooCommerce online store, then we will do a full tutorial on that. That is then the first look at phase one of WooCommerce Builder from Bricks on this Thursday from me, JP. Have a great day, stay safe and see you in the next video.